Today we're diving into a riveting chapter of World War II history, the story of D-Day and the mysterious absence of a lethal adversary. The German U-boats, notorious for their deadly capabilities, were notably unsuccessful in thwarting the greatest seaborne invasion ever mounted. The Allied forces landed on the beaches of Normandy on June 6, 1944, while beneath the waves the feared U-boats were unable to disrupt their advance. So why didn't these stealthy predators turn the tide of this pivotal day? Join us as we embark on a deep dive exploration into this intriguing question. Why didn't U-boats stop the D-Day invasion? To begin with, the German U-boats were not in a position to preemptively lie in wait for the Allied invasion fleet. Given the unknown time and date of the invasion, it would have required continuous patrolling of the anticipated invasion path thereby exposing the U-boats to high risks without any guarantee of significant gains. Additionally, since the invasion took place in Normandy, not where it was widely expected to occur near Calais, any patrolling U-boats would likely have found themselves out of position, rendering any survivors ineffective. Consequently, the U-boat's strategy had to be more reactive, responding to the invasion once it was underway, rather than attempting to prevent it. This was the approach adopted. Initial German suspicions suggested that the Normandy invasion might be a diversion, with the primary invasion to follow at Calais. As a result, the immediate response was restrained. The only naval offensive launched by the Germans on June 6 was an e-boat attack, which managed to sink a destroyer. Of the roughly 46 U-boats positioned in the vicinity, specifically in the Bay of Biscay, 36 were assigned to counter-invasion duties. The first U-boat assault was staged during the night but was quickly aborted after two U-boats were sunk and four damaged, without even reaching the invasion area. Allied air attacks destroyed U-boats in their bases and kept them from being able to maneuver during the day. These U-boats would confront one of the most significant anti-submarine firepower concentrations ever assembled by the Allies. The initial line of defense set up by the Allies consisted of the aircraft from No. 19 Group RAF boasting 25 squadrons and a total of 350 aircraft. Their mission, Operation Cork, was to sweep across 20,000 square miles of ocean. This area was bound by the Loire Estuary, south of Ireland, the English Channel Coast, and the Cotentin Peninsula. The patrol routes were meticulously planned to ensure complete coverage of the designated region with radar at least once every 30 minutes, attacking any detected U-boat on site. Next in the defense line were the anti-submarine warfare ships or ASW ships patrolling between Brest in France and Land's End, including four escort groups from the Royal Navy and two from the Royal Canadian Navy. These groups were supported by two escort carriers that provided fighter cover to protect against any German aerial attacks. An additional layer of defense was established with destroyer groups patrolling west of Cotentin. To fortify the invasion and follow-up convoys, Experienced escorts were deployed, who were further aided by wreck charts and special radio navigation aids. The Allied forces deployed a total of 286 ASW vessels of all types for invasion protection, while also maintaining heavy ASW air and naval patrols around Britain's north coast and the western end of the channel to thwart any interference from Norway-based U-boats. Over the following days, there were more attempts to disrupt the invasion fleet predominantly by U-boats equipped with snorkels. Some of these U-boats reached the invasion fleet and launched successful attacks, although the damage inflicted was minimal given the disparity between the size of the fleet and the number of U-boats. Any damage inflicted happened after the initial landings and the securing of the beachhead, meaning that they could only cause disruption to supply and reinforcement efforts. Eventually, U-boats succeeded in sinking seven escorts, three LSTs, landing ship tanks, and 13 transports at the cost of 20 U-boats, two initial ones and 18 snorkel-equipped ones. Half of the U-boats were sunk by escorts and the other half by patrol aircraft, with two of them taken down by a joint effort of escorts and aircraft. One U-boat was lost to a mine. The E-boats also kept up their attacks, managing to sink a few more ships, but they too suffered heavy losses. The availability of e-boats was further diminished due to air attacks on their bases. There was an attempt by a German destroyer flotilla to launch an offensive, but it was intercepted by Allied destroyers and repelled, resulting in the sinking of two German destroyers. 
The ordeal underscores the difficulties faced by the German Navy in their attempts to disrupt the invasion fleet, their efforts largely hampered by Allied superiority in numbers and coordination. Furthermore, it highlights the strategic success of the Allied forces in not just neutralizing German U-boats, but also limiting the impact of other German naval assets such as E-boats and destroyers. It was a complete failure by the Kriegsmarine and only further illustrated that the Battle of the Atlantic was nearing its end in favor of the Allies. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.